Probably not that hard, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> a great guy who's flown in from Belgrade. From Belgrade you have? Yeah. yeah. Good to see you, man. Yes, man. Cool. See you. Um, so over to John's. Please welcome him to the stage. Hello, hello. See some other familiar faces here. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, we're talking about moms and seed phrases and how they're going to use it and uh, pitfalls and, and foot guns of like backing things up. How do we start solving some of these problems, though? Well, uh, the Bitcoin design community is representing here. We got uh, a few members in the crowd here. It's a community that has uh, been established since uh, 2020. And what we're trying to do is to like uh, have some more representation for the people who care about the grandmas and the grand uncles and uh, all those people. Um, and uh, uh, my talk is going to be about design processes. They told me it has to be something practical because a lot of you guys are devs. And uh, yeah, uh, don't keep it too abstract. So hopefully after this, you'll be able to take something away. You'll learn a little bit more, and uh, maybe we get some more usable products for grandma and, and, and moms and stuff. All right, so what a good design process looks like. For, okay, so design, first of all, is a, is a bit of a loaded term, right? Um, it spans like a whole bunch of different fields and skills and all that. So what we really need to do is to start deconstructing it. Uh, what do you mean by design? Um, what do you mean by process? What do you mean by good, right? I don't know if anyone knows this meme there, but it's... Um, yeah, so uh, at the end of the day, we don't really... You know, it's, 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 it's kind of ambiguous, and it really kind of like depends on uh, uh, what you're trying to accomplish, right? What your outcomes, uh, what outcomes you want to accomplish, what problems you're looking to solve, um, or, you know, what future you want to kind of like design for. What I'm going to be doing during this talk is to um, break down some of the different activities uh, that you know design that's related to design, and some of these things are kind of like uh, uh, based on collaborations that we've had in the Bitcoin design community. Um, so, for example, um, you may use design for concept exploration. Uh, you were just looking into the future of like what is the possibility, uh, what can be, right? Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of pieces of uh, the protocol. Um, I heard something about like uh, uh, some 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 part of it used to was it from the last talk? The descriptors it was out for like ten years or something like that, and um, no one's kind of using it. Well, like. Developers kind of focus a lot on the functionality, right? Um, designers can kind of like connect it to the grandmas and the moms and, and, and those kind of things. So design is a really great uh, tool to use to explore what can be, to build community and hype around um, uh, 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 these ideas. Uh, branding is another thing that, uh, uh, another design activity. For instance, um, uh, Stratum, Albi, um, a few other projects, they came in and they wanted to um, give a good impression to the world about uh, uh, their projects. Uh, they want to get, um, they want to create an identity around um, what they're creating, right? All the cool functions. Um, uh, so, so this is some stuff we did for uh, uh, Stratum, uh, website, logos, uh, typography, etc. Uh, some projects have specific problems they want to solve. So, for example, Galoi, they wanted to look into an uh, issue in displaying multiple currencies in their wallet. They were introducing something called stable sets, and they're like, how do we, how do we represent this, these multiple currencies within our single wallet, which previously it was just Bitcoin sets alone, right? Uh, so they came in, and a bunch of people collaborated on that uh, to resolve this, this problem. Uh, another, another project, Zeus. Uh, they went through a pretty... Um, I don't, how many of you guys use Zeus? Oh, nice, nice. Really cool wallet. Um, I'm pretty sure you've seen like, the first version of it and like, what it is now. It's a stark difference, right? Um, so Bosch... Uh, uh, or, sorry, Doc Sharp. <coughs> <laughs> um, or Alex Sharp, that kind of talks in there. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, worked with uh, Evan and the contributors of uh, uh, Zeus to come up with a full redesign which kind of like broke down all the different components of, um, of that redesign to, in order to have like a good handoff 
for uh, the developers to be able to implement. It was uh, implemented in kind of like um, in an iterative process. So they took out pieces of uh, like certain components and uh, uh, implemented it in like various versions until the entire thing uh, had had that redesign. Um, these kind of like design systems and documentation are still part of the design process, and, but they're really great at kind of like bridging, uh, you know, the designer and developer or like the, whoever's like implementing things. It kind of like bridges uh, 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 those two worlds together um, in a very tangible way. Uh, accessibility. So there's been um, uh, various uh, uh, projects uh, coming into the Bitcoin design community focusing on accessibility. What does that mean? Basically, uh, not everyone is using is able to use a you know your software uh, uh, equally, right? So some people might have like some uh, visual uh, impairments. Uh, they may not be able to um, operate a computer in the same way as, in, for example, keyboards. Some do it by voice, etc. Um, uh, this is an important uh, aspect that's often uh, overlooked. Uh, Another use case for uh, design is exposure. We don't really like do a lot of marketing stuff, or we kind of shy away from marketing in Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, sometimes you have to yell. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if we have pieces of the technology that's just sitting there and no one's really using it, like BIP21, for example, um, then you know we're not really like exercising the full potential of it. We want usage of these things, not for them to just be collecting dust. BIP21, I think um, it's uh, one of them. Uh, so for example, in BIP21, there's a possibility to add additional parameters. Uh, in the Bolt 11 spec, one of those parameters that it's suggested is using the lightning parameter. What you can do with this is now be able to have a single uh, you know, URI that uh, represents both on-chain and lightning. Right, and so this campaign was about just uh, uh, promoting that the adoption of that. So when you copy and paste, uh, you know, a BIP21 code to someone, uh, it's just you know they they can the, the wallet their wallet can now have the option to choose which uh, which is your preferred network network to 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 pay on. Um, so yeah, this was a really cool uh, 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 campaign. Uh, design process. So uh, some of you might be familiar with Jam. We have some developers here uh, on that project. And um, sometimes uh, it's just needed to uh, you know, implement uh, some structure, a design process. So Christoph uh, Ono there, he, um, he was contributing to the Jam project very early on. They were working on a, a design for a, like a web-based a web client and uh, improving some installation and stuff like that. And um, uh, there were designers who wanted to, who were looking in, who wanted to like actually handle the work, but for them to get started, because it's such a dense and technical topic, coin joins and all that, um, uh, sometimes you just need to you know, get some of the information out of the developers, get alignment with everyone, and then uh, that will enable other designers to be able to contribute to your project. Um, so having a good structure is kind of important. So this one is my favorite, design sprints. And um, I use this uh, uh, like kind of like, it's, it's a bit of a workshop. I use this for uh, different projects that uh, want to solve kind of like uh, some big problems with regards to like if it's a brand new project and a brand new team, or if it's a uh, new feature that's being launched and um, no one really has the clear definition of what it is. Um, this is a really good uh, 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 process and I'm going to step into it a little bit. So what is design good for? So design is good for planning, right? We use design uh, for planning. It's a great uh, a, a way to kind of like get everyone aligned, as I said earlier. And um, with that alignment, you know, okay, so, so maybe I need to break it down um, even more. So why, why do we need alignment in the first place? Uh, you have very technical people and you have designers, you have copywriters, you have people writing documentation, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're planning for you know, a new feature, uh, yeah, if you're planning a new feature in your application or in your software stack, 
you kind of need to get everybody on the same page, right? But oftentimes, a lot of people don't know what it is they're actually building, and then that results to a bunch of like bike shedding. They don't know the rationale behind why they're making those decisions and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it, it, it becomes unproductive at, at a point. So this design sprint system uh, uh, process, uh, it's about five, stage, uh, five steps. First step is to map, then we decide, uh, sketch, uh, basically sketching out some kind of like solutions. Uh, prototype, that's the part where you know you, you get more visual design. And uh, test, because testing is important because you want to be able to, just as you test your code, right, designers need to test behavior, right? So let's, uh, I'm gonna give you like a, like a dive into one of the projects that came into the community. Um, uh, starting with like day one, uh, this is like a mapping, the, the mapping exercise. And there's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of sticky notes that are being done. It uh, could happen completely remotely. And the first question is like, what is it that we're trying to deliver? What is the product? What is the feature? So um, <laughs> this is a design sprint we did about design sprints. Um, there's uh, like a bunch of voting and stuff you'll see there, like uh, these little, little markers. So everyone gets on a call. It's, it's very interactive. And they're kind of like deciding on you know, um, like everyone's like laying out their uh, ideas of what it is that they're, uh, 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 they're trying to deliver, what the team is trying to deliver. And we use a voting mechanism to just uh, uh, come to a quick decision, right? Um, yeah, then uh, uh, what does it do, right? What are the functionalities of it? Uh, Basically, you know, we're getting kind of like uh, uh, breaking apart all the different features of the product or, 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 or project that you're launching. And uh, again, we use voting to try to come to a consensus of like wh where the focus area is going to be. Uh, even if we don't use all of these things, we can always uh, carry it on to like add it, add it onto the roadmap, right? Add it, add it to the backlog. Um, so this right here becomes documentation about what the team thinks the project is, right? Maybe someone has an idea that they can't really get into development now for that first version, for that prototype, uh, but you can always come back to this and see like, okay, maybe we tackle this other area here now. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't say it. The project uh, 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 I'm gonna be showing you this for is Blixt. We were doing some uh, design sprints and explorations last year for that. All right, who is using it? So everyone has, you know, like whether it's the grandma, the mom, the uncle, the business, the developer, everyone has their own idea in open source about who they're building for, right? Um, so having a clear kind of like focus area on like who the user is, uh, is going to be super important for other activities. Right? You need to also get alignment on that, you know, who you're building for. If you don't have that, then it kind of, uh, you kind of miss the mark. You can't, we say like design, uh, 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 Bitcoin is for everyone or Bitcoin is for anyone, but how do you design for any and everyone, right? It's, uh, uh, you kind of have to localize those at some point. You have to scale down a bit. Um, yeah, so uh, another one of the activities is how do we want the future to look? This is like the long-term goals in like one year, five years, 10 years time. What do we want people to gain from this experience? How do, like how would we measure the success of this feature or this project or whatever, right? So we put down some, um, some, some, some long-term goals there. Again, voting, we see this one here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, we see this one here has like um, uh, the majority of votes, so this is probably the one that we'll kind of like move into the next um, the next phase. It's also important to understand how things fail, right? Um, uh, a lot of times we kind of like look at like, w or at least maybe on design you may assume that you know we look at those happy paths, but it's also important to look at the um, what negative outcomes can result from it, you know, so we could kind of design for that, um, design defensively in a way. Uh, by day three, we'll start. Uh, we, we need to start making some like more decisions. Start honing in on like the areas of the user journey that we kind of want to tackle. So, after all that uh, 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 exploration and brain dump that we've done previously, 
we start to get a little bit more structure here, right? You can see the user journey map uh, broken down into like various sections, where there's onboarding, um, things about setting up a channel, um, when you finally get onto the application, at what point you want to have people backing up, um, and how they uh, make their first payment, uh, effectively, uh, to, to, to open up the channel. Right, so we decide on the area, perhaps it's onboarding, perhaps it's somewhere else. Because it's a limited time span, you can't often design all cases, right, all failure modes. So you kind of have to uh, pick a focus. Now, this is a kind of process, this design sprint, you could use in, like, multiple times. You could use it on the same, um, on the same project, you know, to see a different path. Um, or you can use it for new features. It, it, it doesn't matter, and you could just uh, keep iterating on it uh, from, from what you learned from the previous one. Uh, that is wrong. Okay, sorry. That was supposed to be day three. <laughs> day, day three sketching. Um, yeah, so again, this is all, this can all be done online. You know, we don't all get to be in this fabulous place together. Um, uh, we often work online remotely in our caves. So, yeah, there's these whiteboarding tools, you know, you can take out your pen, pencil, um, or draw on your iPad or whatever, and um, submit some sketches. Everyone um, uh, who's in the workshop is able to contribute that. And these aren't necessarily looking so pretty. You don't have to be the best you know, designer or, or whatever. It's supposed to be a process that's inclusive for folks to be able to kind of like express their ideas. You know, as developers, you might have like a very precise uh, a way in which you want to kind of like explain how to do something because you came up with like a great solution. Um, you know, if you can't find that like inspiration for it, uh, then, you know, you could sketch it out. And then what you end up with is this kind of like Frankenstein of a wireframe. And at that point, this is where the process kind of like uh, stops, the back and forth stops with the developer, designer, and all those different people who are taking part in the design sprint. Because now the prototyping can be done. What we've just done here is gathered all this information you know, um, gotten a brain dump from all the different participants, the contributors from the project, and hopefully we have alignment through that, right? Alignment is super important. If you don't have the time to explain why and what uh, your project is about and who it's targeting, then you can't expect to onboard a designer to be able to solve uh, uh, these problems in a meaningful way. And we're all trying to get, you know, mass Bitcoin adoption. That's uh, that's been kind of like a a, a, a thing that's been going on uh, uh, going on going on around the air for like uh, uh, a while now. You know, we're talking about mass adoption, mass adoption. We kind of need to um, uh, uh, make space for designers to be able to uh, practice their crafts. All right. So as I mentioned, um, there's a prototyping phase that could last for a few days, it could be longer, um, it's asynchronous uh, at that point. Since you have all those plans and, um, and brain dumps, it now then, and sketches and all that, it now can then be presented in a very nice way. So all those sketches, all those notes, it might seem like a bit of a waste of time, but now you have something. You have something a little bit more polished, something that could be tested. Right? Test-driven development, this is test-driven design. Right? You could compare it like that. Now you have something, it's a prototype, it's a design prototype. This one lives inside Figma, you could use PenPot, it doesn't matter what the designers end up using. But with this prototype now, um, you're now able to send it off to someone and observe their behavior. So, uh, yeah, so you observe their behavior and see if your assumptions, the assumptions that you made in the beginning of the, um, of the design sprint, all those notes that you wrote down, you know, all the different ideas that everyone had, are those assumptions based in reality? Like, how do they stack up to things, right? And from that testing, that user testing, you get some data. And this is where, like, a user re researcher comes in, right? So you have someone who's kind of, like, facilitating the design sprint, you have someone who's prototyping the design. You now have a user researcher here. 
there's various different, that's why I mentioned um, earlier, there's different skills and roles that uh, um, uh, uh, make up a design process, including the developers as well. Um, so you get this nice report um, uh, 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 about you know, the questions that you wanted to answer during the, um, during the process. And now you get to make a decision. You have to make a decision as contributors or as maintainers for these projects. You make a decision on, is this worth going into development? Should we push this into development now? In seven, eight days, in a week or so, you've just been able to test your assumptions. Bike shedding, we could continue doing that, continue like, like over and over. Everyone has their different opinions on how things should look, how things should work. But at the end of the day, when it gets into the user's hands, when they give you feed, when grandma or mom gives feedback, that's when we and says, "Hey, I don't know what this word seed means." That's when you really can start making proper decisions. Or do you prefer working for six months building something that doesn't really connect to mom or grandma, right? So um, yeah, in closing, I would say you know um, we need to kind of like embrace design, design processes, if we want to get to this goal of mass adoption, right? Um, uh, just some uh, small takeaways about like the makeup of the team, and you know some people may be uh, interested in getting like onboarding designers into their projects. I've seen it happen successfully. I've seen it happen um, uh, unsuccessfully. Um, the successful ones are the ones which are open and kind of like respecting the other, the other person's role. The developers respecting the designer's role, the designers interested in like diving in deeper into the problem, right? And understanding uh, culture and everything else uh, 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 around it. It takes a diverse team, right? It's not like great software isn't created by just one skilled person. It needs a a, a multitude of people, as I mentioned, copywriters, uh, people writing docs. Developer experience is also a thing, mind you, right? Um, uh, uh, a CLI is also an interface. It's, a, it's, a, it's, in a way, design, right? You need to have different people on the team to be, bring their different perspectives, bring their different uh, 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 skills to be able to make a very robust, high-quality experience. Um, this is, a, this is kind of like a joke in the design kind of like world, you know, make the logo bigger. I don't know what's the equivalent in developer um, speakers, make it faster, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, um, but, you know, this is a common uh, 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 thing that's brought up where, you know, someone who um, uh, just looks at the design and subjectively says, hey, let's, let, let's make this bigger. Well, it may be, I'm not saying in all cases, maybe in some, some cases it's, uh, it, it's made like that for a reason, sometimes it's not, right? Sometimes those, those reasons are hard to describe. Maybe for a designer who's like really focused on aesthetics, uh, they can't really rationalize why it's not bigger, just the same way as you know, some developers may not be able to rationalize you know, why they use certain libraries over another. Okay, that one is a little bit more like easier because you could benchmark and do tests and stuff like that. Okay, I get it. Okay, it's like de development could be a, little, a lot more objective, <laughs> but you know, still there's parts of the development process that um, are subjective. Um, you know, like should you use tabs or spaces? Hey, tabs, tabs, no, tabs. Okay, I got two two tabs. God damn. I went to tabs, then you could like like you could change the spacing depending on okay sure. okay it, it doesn't it doesn't matter when it boils down to the you know like when it gets compiled anyway whatever right but some things are subjective and they require some level of trust right um, trust in the um, other person um, the other person's role the other person's skills etc. And what I've shown you there you know like all these notes and sketches and stuff it's all messy you know. You start at different stages as well. Um, you know, some projects start off wanting to have like really great branding or really great design system, and others don't. They don't need that. They just wanna. Um, they just need design as a way to, you know, um, as a concept exploration or like an MVP. Um, so it starts at all different stages, and along the journey of product development, you can um, add. Uh, 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 you know, you could do a re redesign or rebrand, so some of them go in and out and ebb and flow, etc. But 
reaching alignment is always the goal. And the alignment is between uh, the developers, the users, and the designers, right? Um, communication is key along all those um, streams as well. A lot of people use telegrams for the uh, telegram for your uh, 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 user support and stuff. I have a gripe about that. You could talk about. Uh, we could talk about it later, but um, yeah, uh, 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 the users are in there. You're listening to them. You know, the designers should also be, you know, engaged with uh, those users. The developer is good for them to also be engaged with that, and the designer and developer working hand in hand together. It's a kumbaya kind of moment, right? And uh, but yeah, it's a messy process, but uh, together we can all reach alignment and create excellent experiences. Um, thanks for listening. That's about it. Uh, these slides, uh, uh, the templates, is uh, from the Bitcoin Design Community. Uh, Pablo Stanley created these open peeps uh, kind of uh, uh, illustrations, and I got a bunch from them. Uh, uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, illustrations as well. Uh, you could check out Bitcoin.design for um, to check out the community. We have a guide there that you can see, um, you know, uh, uh, different uh, design resources as well. Uh, there's a UI kit, icons, and you can see more about these collaborations that we've done on the projects page. Uh, have a look. Um, I myself am John Spihari. You can scan this for the design sprint template. Um, it's a it's using this tool called Fig Jam. So uh, yeah, you could just uh, duplicate that and you know have a look at it. You could uh, uh, start filling out the, the 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 notes in the different section with your um with your team if you want to run it, or you could come into the Bitcoin Design community and uh, maybe we help uh, run it for you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Really great talk, and I'm really glad as well that that was the best looking presentation of the day, <laughs> given that you were speaking about design. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, so yeah, you talked about, um, you know, design should be tested, which is right. Um, what's your experience in finding users, the, like, us the appropriate users for doing that testing? Um, well, uh, thankfully, I have a mom, so, um, <laughs> um, uh, well, uh, if, uh, let me see if I go back here. Um, in finding the user, uh, da -da 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 -da, in finding the user, you know, we, we define, um, like during the design sprint, we just define who is it for, right? So at that point, we have kind of like a definition of the person who we want to kind of target, who or we assume um, is going to be, um, uh, 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 the person that we should target. Um, at that point, you have kind of like the profile, the persona, and you can start looking out places like Twitter, places like um, uh, 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 the Telegram support. You know, you, you always have these power users who are always, you know, eager to, 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 to test things out. Um, uh, there's also other, like, tools that you could use, like Maze, um, which is really good for um, user testing as well. Um, and I think they have like some recruiting um, like capability, which is kind of like people outside of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Um, you can also do stuff like surveys and other types of user research, which uh, I didn't get to highlight it uh, very much here. We have a um, user research toolkit um, in the Bitcoin design community on the guide um, that you could check out in the project section as well. Awesome. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I'm interested in, well, how much are, are the Bitcoin design community interested in uh, helping with hardware as well as software development? Uh, I don't speak for the community. I'm just like a little node in there. But um, uh, if you do want to like engage in that, um, I think that would be a fantastic area. Um, you know, like, again, designing excellent experiences if you're able to kind of like set up a design challenge, and we could help you do that, set up a design challenge. It could be, uh, I, I'm pretty sure we have some industrial designers and stuff uh, in there as well. I'm, I'm, there's over 3,000 people. So they kind of need something, like, like you need to have something concrete in order, like a concrete problem uh, 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 to, to, to get them hooked, you know? So um, these design challenges are basically like, you know, you outline um, kind of like what the problem is, and then you put it out there. And, um, and yeah, we could talk about it in the, on our community calls and stuff to get it hyped up. I would love to see some hardware stuff, for sure. Awesome. 
Can I ask a question? Um, it, how, how much does this overlap with the Legends of Lightning stuff? <laughs> well, um, let's... Um I'm gonna have to stretch for <laughs> for for <laughs> for a thing, but like um yeah so uh, we did a um a hackathon last year, Legends of Lightning, and um and part of it we uh we had a designathon um in the Bitcoin design community, which was like a design focused um hackathon, let's say like the output of it is just prototypes. Uh, again, you know, you could use design as, you know, concepting the future, what things could look like. And one of the projects that came from there was uh, Saving Satoshi. So Adam Jonas, he had this, like, loose concept of, like, uh, uh, you know, a project idea. He submitted it. And um, Christoph and a few other people, they just, like, started exploring, like, what, uh, like, this future of education on a scalable level could look like. Then, this project also entered the hackathon, uh, and they won the design award as well. So that's the kind of overlap, I guess, the communities of, like, Bolt Fund was spawned out of uh, uh, Bitcoin design. So yeah, that's the overlap. Super. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much, Johns. Another round of applause for him.